here we are with another restoration. Um, so this time we are working on a Yamaha, of course. Um, and this one is a 412S, um, which is quite nice for me, I have to say, because I own, I've owned it from new, a Yamaha FGX 412. Um, without the S. So the S, for those that don't remember uh, or haven't seen any of the other videos, the FG412, the FG, anything with an S after the letter numbers. Um, so for anyone that hasn't watched uh, some of my other videos or, or seen me talk about this, the kind of serial number system, not serial number system, the model number system, um, if the numbers uh, are followed by an S and the S is mostly on its own, it means it's a solid top body. So it's a spruce top. Um, if it is followed by something like uh, an S and an A, it, it means different things. Uh, if it's followed by, sometimes on the older guitars, you'll get an SB. Um, and usually if that's a vintage guitar, the SB normally means sunburst finish. So if you look at the guitar and it's got a sunburst finish on it and it has an SB, don't be mistaken by thinking it's a solid top because it's not. It's a laminate, but it's a sunburst finish. This one is just an S, doesn't have anything after that. So this is most definitely a solid spruce top. Um, so this is FG 412 S. So I bought this guitar from somebody as a fixer upper. I hadn't seen it other than some pictures. Um, <clears throat> and I sort of said, well, bearing in mind the model, bearing in mind the age, bearing in mind what I've got to do to it, it's probably worth this if I resell it. Um, and the, the people took the offer and sent this thing to me unseen really, apart from these pictures. Um, so I got the guitar kind of expecting I would have to do a fret redressing. I would have to probably change nut and saddle, things like that. I would have to probably clean up some of the bodywork. But I have to say, this is a little bit of a gem because I've got this. Uh, so I've taken the tuners off already. So here are the uh, tuners. Um, and the tuners are tuners are dirty and they need a good clean up, but they're not they're not rusty, they're not damaged in any way. And I have to say, this is probably if you look at that, apart from that little ding there, this is one of the tidiest headstocks I've seen on a Yamaha in years. Um, and even if you look at the, let me do that without smacking the guitar. Look at the back. Normally, that has got all sorts of bumps and dents and things like that in it. Um, so the only thing I can really see with this is it's got a little bit of dirt around the headstock and it's got this film grime on it, um, which I will clean and polish out. But when you look at the, the frets, I don't know whether you can see that there. Let me see if I can show you it. Those frets, to me, almost look untouched. They are beautifully round, but they are just filthy dirty and there's just grime on the fretboard. Um, so I think that looks really good. And then going down the body, we even have the original uh, cellophane Yamaha sticker that would have covered the scratch plate originally. So I've yet to take that off. Obviously, I'm not going to do that yet uh, while I'm working on it. The inside of it looks immaculate. Looks really, really nice, really, really clean. Um, the body is the, probably the thing that surprised me the most. So there's one little nick you can just kind of see there, maybe. Um, just see a blemish there where it's obviously been just knocked against something. But I have to say, the rest of it looks pretty immaculate. The back of the body, beautifully clear sides of it the neck joint is lovely just dusty and dirty and needs a good clean and a, a setup so so here's what i'm going to do with this i'm going to clean up the tuners <clears throat> so i'm going to give these a good 
kind of clean up and bring them back to a lovely chrome polished state so they look new. Um, I'm going to clean up this headstock and I'm going to take all the grime and grease, um, dust and everything off of it. I'm going to clean up the fretboard so I'm going to take all the grime that sits just inside where the frets are and I'm also going to re-oil this as well. So I think this is, is this a... I'm quite sure what fretboard this is. It doesn't look like rosewood, so it might be a, not quite the right colour for ebony as well. So I'll look at that and I'll find out what that is. Um, so I'm going to give all this a nice clean up. I'm going to replace the nut here um, and see if I can put in a bone nut. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because it's a solid top. If, it's, if this was a laminate, I wouldn't bother because it was just not enough to to really change the tone that much um, then i am going to put in a so i have the saddle that came with it but again i suspect it was a it's a plastic one so i'm going to test that um, and if so i'm going to replace it with a bone saddle and then i'm going to put some bone bridge pins in as well and that will just give it an extra little bit of volume, extra little bit of projection, um, an ex extra little bit of kind of tone as well. And then we'll put some nice, uh, probably 11s on it. Um, I suspect there'll be elixirs. Um, and then generally just give it a clean up and pull it back in uh, and then get it advertised for sale. Uh, so let's dive in and start working on some of these kind of component parts. So I'm going to start with the uh, tuners. All right, okay, so um, here we have all the bits that I'm going to need. So on here I have uh, some cleaning agent, uh, which is non-abrasive, non-corrosive, so that it doesn't damage the um, uh, chrome. I have my trusty sanding pads uh, so what I'll do is I'll lay these out and then as I get to the point where I'm ready to polish and shine these up I can then sort of do that and we use each one in turn so that we end up getting to a nice bright kind of finish so I'm just going to start with this and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to gen gently go around and just give this a good wipe over. And that might, might just be enough, um, but we'll see. What I'll do is I just want to take the worst of the grime off and see whether that is good enough to allow me to then sort of not have to do anything else with it really. Uh, so we'll see what I'm just going to do is I've forgotten my little polishing cloth and you're going to get that Okay, so there we go. Now you're talking probably five minutes, not even five minutes really, five minutes, and it already looks brand new. Uh, so that is one tuner. And in fact, so if I show you it in comparison to 
the other one, you can just see the difference in the dirt and the dirt and the film and stuff like that on it. So hopefully that you can see that. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep working on these um, and then we'll move on to the washers and the screws and things like that. But they look in pretty good condition anyway. Okay. See you in a bit. Okay, so here we are. I have I've done all the tuners. So they all now look lovely and shiny and all the scuzz that's around these kind of inner bits has gone. I've polished up all the edges, all the turning spindles. So they are they are all now lovely. The last thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to start doing the nuts and the washers just to uh, and these look all right actually so i'm just going to give them a little buff and that should be like a two minute job so these things have taken me about probably an hour and a half maybe slightly more um so you've got to think about the amount of time that you're putting into these things to make it sort of make you realize whether it's worth doing it for the value of the guitar uh, but in this case, I'm, I'm pretty confident. So I'm going to do the same with these, buff these up, and then we'll um, move on to the next stage. So with these, I'm just going to, because they're pretty good, I'm just going to start with my 6,000. Yeah, already I can see that's coming up. Lovely. <laughs> and washers are now all cleaned up and lovely and shiny ready to go back on the guitar um, but we have a very dirty headstock uh, so you can't see any shine on there whatsoever really and it's a beautiful day out in the uh, outside in the garden so you should see a nice shine glinting off that but there's nothing uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to polish this and I'm also going to do the same with the body because the body's got a kind of film of scuzz and dirt all over it. Um, so once I've polished it up and I'm just going to use a, a lint free cloth uh, and I'm going to use some non abrasive, non kind of corrosive polish uh, and just give us a buff over. And then I'll show you the finished product and then we'll start putting the uh, chrome work back together. <laughs>
I still can't quite see the shine on there. Oh, there you can go. You can see that shine now on there. It's nice and clean, nice and polished. Uh, so I'm going to put the chrome back on. I'm going to turn it over first. And uh, I'm going to put the chrome back on it. So what I need to remember is when I took it off, this was that. So when I turn it over, this is now this because I've just turned it over should find it only goes in one way anyway there we go um and what we've got is some nice little um sort of locating pins that actually locate in place so it can't move uh, so we'll put this back together <laughs> Headstock, which you can see now is all lovely and shiny and clean. If you look at the back, it's all nice and clean and shiny. So that's that bit done. So now I'm going to move on to, uh, in fact, so I polished this, but I didn't polish the rest of the body. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do the rest of the body polishing, and then let's see if we can move this up a little bit. So I'm going to polish the rest of the body. And then we'll start looking at um, the other bits we need to do. see it just about here there is the tiniest of little scuff marks where I think it is 
It looks like either a buckle or something like that has rubbed against it somewhere, maybe. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's almost indistinguishable. So, overall, our guitar is back to a lovely polished state. Uh, so, and now I'm going to attack this fretboard. So I'm going to get some, just some damp kind of water and I'm just going to try and see if I can loosen the worst of this dirt off just where the um, frets are. And then I'm going to use some fretboard oil to then clean up the rest of it and give it a nice shine again because it looks like to me someone's tried to polish this because there's all bits of stuff in the grain and I suspect the dirt is actually residue of polish or cleaning materials uh, so it should come up quite nice there's no literally there are no finger marks or fret fret wear at all so I'm not even convinced it's been played, um, but we'll, we'll we'll get on with it. We'll we'll polish it up and then we'll see what um, see how it comes up. fretboard so what you can see is hopefully you'll have seen it clearly there was loads of gunk and dust and dirt where, where I think someone's cleaned it on the above each fret um, and I've now been over and I've just polished all the gunk off and I've shined them back up so they are now kind of nice and shiny you can't quite see it in this light they are nice and shiny, ready to be used. And look at how, I mean, literally, they've not been touched. So I think this is a, this is a great find in terms of a, a guitar. So next job is to use the oil uh, and give it an oil, which will also um, add a final sort of clean and that, and we'll look after the fretboard for years to come, hopefully. Um, I will probably also do the same to the um, bridge. Uh, and then we'll get on with the saddle, the pins, and possibly a replacement nut. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so let us get on with oiling the fretboard. Um, now with this stuff, you don't need uh, a huge amount of it because it goes quite far um, and also I'm going to work it in with my finger now, the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to use anything absorbent because if I do it's going to waste the oil by absorbing the oil um, so I want to work the, the oil in with my um, finger and then what I'll do is I'll rub it off once I've let it set in for a little while <music> trying to um, use the oil sparingly just to give it a nice clean and a finish.
go. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll give that a little while and then I will clean it off. Um, what I should have done was clean, covered the uh, headstock. So I need to give that another, just another polish just to take the oil off of it. Okay, that looks beautiful. 